Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the original Grognard, the OG, back in the Grognard's Corner, sitting here. We are going to be continuing our look at the Battle of Abu Aguila, June 6, 1967, our study in three mediums. And we just got done doing the look at the battle through John Tiller Software's Middle East 67 in my last uh, three videos I just did. And that was at the company and battalion level. So now we're going to scale it down a little bit to the platoon level, and we are taking a look at Avalon Hill's classic Arab-Israeli wars and the Battle of Abu Aguila in that system. Uh, I'm probably not going to get to any gameplay in this video. Uh, there's still a couple things I, I, I want to uh, try to set in my mind before I sit down. Sorry, whenever I, whenever I sit down and, and record for a game that I haven't played in, 25, 30 plus years, uh, I'm always a little bit hesitant to jump into it. It takes a while for me to build up my courage and my nerve because it's like, oh my God, how many people am I going to piss off and how many people am I going to have yell at me for getting rules wrong? And honestly, most people who give me rules feedback is, you know, they're wonderful about it, but every once in a while you get, you get one that's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. Fortunately, I don't get many of those, but it still doesn't mean I don't have a little bit of trepidation when I step into a new system. Um, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, this video is going to be broken down into two parts. The actual uh, differences in gameplay with uh, the Panzer Blitz Panzer Leader series and the Arab-Israeli Wars and the look at the actual battle itself. Uh, so I'm just going to cover... I, let me go ahead and jump into the the, the historical uh, how this compares to the historical battle. Now I'm not going to get too much into the exact the 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 map because uh, as we all know, Arab Israeli Panzer Blitz Panzer Leader Arab Israeli Wars they all ran on a geomorphic map system. It allowed the allow Avalon Hill allow, allow, it <laughs> I can talk really allowed Avalon Hill to do a lot of scenarios with very few map boards and you know try to get the map as historically close as you possibly could. You're not looking at historical maps when you're playing on geomorphic boards. This is just not something you do. You're trying to look at all right, what's the most reasonable and closest approximation. Um, and the Arab Israeli wars. The maps, there are four maps. One of them has the Suez Canal on it, and I think only one of them has uh, any type of villages or, or 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 city hexes or whatever you have. Um, so you're not really probably going to be seeing a board in Arab-Israeli wars that really perfectly 100% matches the terrain at Abu Aguila, but you know what? That's, that's, we're not really worried about that. Uh, so what we do have is we do have this, the Arabs, the Egyptians have Group A. Uh, I think this is their Group A. They have two groups, A Group A, Group B. This group is actually the uh, Abu Aguila defensive location itself, and so they only get to set up in, in this three hex wide, and they've got a bunch of improved positions, and these IP2s, which, you know, could represent foxholes, buildings, you know, what have you. They got a bunch of mines, and, you know, they do have a road that's running right through the area, so you can basically assume that's the road uh, that the the Israelis would be driving along to push to uh, the Suez Canal. Um, and they've got, <laughs> they've got a bunch of infantry. I think they've got, like, 18 infantry units, these 6681s. Um, and there's a couple... There's a couple anti-tank guns in there as well. Yeah, there's a what is that? 100 and what is that? 107 millimeter anti-tank gun. Yeah, not very much in range. Four inch, four x range, two defense. But you know, if they're in improved positions, that helps a little bit. So this represents the the defenses, the infantry defenses at Abu Aguila. And then they have a secondary group, which is kind of over here, and they can only set up uh, on, N, I think it's hex row N to the west, and at least four hexes away from the north map edge. Um, and so they've got uh, some artillery. They've got some 100 and, what is it, 125 millimeters. Okay, so yeah, we've got that. you got three batteries of those. And you got these uh, these big 120 millimeter mortars. See so if we can get zoom in on that kind of clearly. 
like so. So that that is supposed to represent the the organic artillery that was part of Second Brigade. Uh, that was responsible for the defense of Abu Aguila. Let's take a look at some of the armor. Now, the, so, now the Egyptians have got a lot of these T-3485s. Now, as we've already discussed in the last series of videos in my own research, yep, we know that there were T-3485s there. The Egyptians had 66 T-3485s at the Battle of Abu Aguila. So there they are. That's the representative. We've got a bunch of counters for that. And let's take a look at the other unit that we knew was at the Battle of Abu Aguila. There we go, SU-100s, the, uh, the Egyptians had 44 SU-100s at the Battle of Abu Aguila, and there it is, it's represented right there. Cool, unfortunately, there's, uh, there's another unit that's on here that's represented, let's take a look at it. That is a T-10. Now, most of you are probably going, what the hell is a T-10? I Honestly, I had to look it up myself. The T-10 is basically the final version of the Yosef Stalin series, the, the, the famed IS-2, IS-3, or JS-2, JS-3, however you want to look at it, from World War II. This is the GS, or the JS, or the IS, Yosef Stalin, Joseph Stalin, 9 or 10. This is the final production run of the uh, of the of the Yosef Stalin series. Uh, the Egyptians did have T-10s in their service, but again, there weren't any at the Battle of Abu Aguila. They were all, most of them were in the reserves that were, you know, 200 miles or 200 kilometers away across the Suez. Uh, and the Egyptians got like five or six of these T-10s. I think uh, about, no, maybe more than that, maybe eight or nine. So, we've seen this before. In the last series I did, we saw Tiller series add in Shermans that the Egyptians did not have at Abu Aguila. And here we're seeing Avalon Hill adding in T-10s at Abu Aguila, which the Egyptians did not have at Abu Aguila. I'm going to assume, and I have to assume this, is that they were put in just a just to buff out the counter count and to balance the scenario even more so, or just even just even balance the scenario. Because basically, while I was going through, I've used every single T thirty four counter and every single um, SU one hundred counter that is given in the game. Um, let's take a look at the scenario real quick. And honestly, even still with that, I think. The Egyptians are a little bit outclassed, but so here we go. Here we go. Here's here's the Egyptians. So they've got 27 uh, platoons of infantry uh, for the Abu Aguila force itself. Three anti-tank guns, three mortars, a bunch of improvised positions, a bunch of mines. They've got 12 T-3485s. You can see that right there. That is every single T-3485 from the game. They've got six. Uh, they've got three SU-100s. Again, that's every single SU-100 counter from the game. And they added in the six T-10s. Of course, you know, you got your artillery and some trucks over here. Even still, this, from what I understand, this is a rough one for the Egyptians to win. So, again, it comes down to it had to have been added as a balance to the game. They took a look at the existing counter sheet and said, all right, this is how many counters we're going to pa patch in here. And honestly, if you take a look at the T-10 and the T-3485, you know, there are, what did I say? There were six. Uh, yeah, six T-10 units included. They would, to, to even just have, they could have thrown some more issues into the counter mix, I guess, because the SUs are similar in stats to the to the T10 I mean probably you know three or four more SUs would have been able to equal it or you know they'd had to throw in probably you know 12 more T34s to come up with a relative count um so again it I honestly believe that it is just it's not they were trying it's not that their information was bad or their information was wrong uh, it's just that I'm, I'm pretty sure it was done 
because they needed the extra counters to balance the scenario. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at what the what the what the Egyptians have. Now, the Egyptian forces they got right. I mean, there were, there were only two types of tanks that the Egyptians had at Abu Aguila, and the last one, the Tiller game, they got them right. The Centurions and the Super Shermans. This one again, they got the Israeli forces right, where you've got the Centurion. Now, look at how friggin' beefy that thing is. It's a 25 attack value, 15 defense, and the Egyptians have got like seven of these. Take that and compare it to the T-34. It's like, oh my God, that thing's a beast compared to the T-34. The, the, the Centurion alone, 25 to 7, well, that's 3 to 1 odds just straight off the top. Whereas it's going to take three units of T-34s to even get a one-to-one -one odd against the Centurions. Jeez, that's a beefy tank that the, that, the, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the Egyptians have. So we got the Centurions, and we know that the Centurions were there. There is no doubt about that. And they also had... Uh, we got two types of Shermans here. We got the normal... Oops. Get that zoomed in a little bit. We got the Super Sherman with an attack value of 22. And then they gave us a Sherman flail. Now, I'm a little bit vague as if the Egyptians actually had flails directly at Abu Aguila. I couldn't find anything about it. But since they gave the Egyptians so many mines, I guess they, they might have just gone ahead and thrown in the flail unit uh, to... Uh, to kind of balance it out a little bit. Again, it's not like I think they were trying to rewrite history. I think it's just more of a game balance issue. And you, you'll see this a lot of times. Games will have to... They, they can't really go in the exact historical order of battle, especially in a game like Panzer Blades, Panzer Blades, Arab Israeli Wars, when you're trying to do so many different types of engagements over such a big time period, you can't stuff in all the counters you want because you only have a limited counter set. And I'll be getting to that here in a little bit because... I have a bone to pick with Avalon Hill about the counter count. So I honestly think it, it's not trying, like I said, it's not trying to rewrite history. It's just trying to balance the scenario as historically close as they can get it. So here we have, again, looking at the Israeli forces at Abu Aguila, you've got the seven uh, Shermans, the one flail Sherman, bunch of infantry, a couple of platoons of MG infantry, and then the other force of... Uh, of uh, seven centurions plus the the Egyptians or the Israelis also get uh, three batteries of off-board artillery, uh, 155 millimeter 10 H strength H H strength attack. All right, so so as we've seen from the last two scenarios or the last two games that we've played, Tiller stuck in units that weren't there to bring the balance into gameplay to bring to bring to bring the balance the game. Avalon Hill it appears, has done the exact same thing. And the idiots are outside blowing my lawn around, so I'm going to pause this real quick while they do that, and I'll be back. All right, I think the lawnscape people have done blowing enough leaves around, and hopefully they won't be back around anytime soon. Um, so anyways, that, 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 that's my take on, on the scenario overview of what I think Avalon Hill was trying to do by putting in units that weren't there. As far as the scenario is concerned, it's a pretty easy scenario. The Israelis have one group of units that enter from this edge and you get victory points for exiting them off that edge. So they're going to be having to fight through these defenses here at Abu Aguila. They also have these units up here, the Centurions, which enter... I'm going to get into this because... <laughs> This doesn't make any freaking sense. Uh, they enter from the north edge of the map, uh, Hexro M to the west. So basically right along this edge right here. They get victory points for exiting those units off the west end of the map. Okay, I'm going to let that sink in for a little bit. Think about it. On turn one, I enter on the wet, up, uh, west, the north edge west of Hex M, and I have to exit them off the west map edge. Running the numbers, I can exit every single one of those units off, all of these units, it's like 45 victory points, and never get a shot fired at me in return 
from the Egyptians. All right, how do we do this? We're playing with half hexes. So you spend the first movement point to move on to this half hex right here. You can't get op fired at yet. To get op fired, you need to spend at least 25% of your movement in someone's line of sight. And the centurions have five movements, so they need to spend, you know, they have to spend two movement points in someone's line of sight. So they spend the first victory, first movement point. Egyptians can't see that point spent because it's off board. You spend the first movement point to move onto the hex. And then you spend your second movement point to move off. You're now, you are now off the map board again. You've spent two movement points, but you're no longer in line of sight because you're off the map board. And you can bring every single unit on in that hex and immediately move them off. It's 45 victory points right there. There's also victory points for killing stuff. And if you do that, granted, all this armor here can just immediately <laughs> run down this way and try to squish these Israeli Sherman forts here. But still, and I checked with this on Facebook and Board Game Geek, and it's like, yeah, it's 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 a broken scenario the way it's written. I'm not going to play it that way because, you know, where's the fun in that? But, yeah, nobody didn't think this through when they wrote the scenario for it. Oh, well, it happens. Um... Other than that, I mean, it's basically going to come down to a brawl. My plan is, yeah, you know, I'll have these guys come on and try to fight their way through through the defenses here at Abu Aguila. But, you know, the Centurions I'm going to bring on, and I'll get into your tra traditional shooting match here with the, with, the Isra or with the Egyptians, just so we can see what happens. Um, the only... <laughs> uh, okay. Let's take a look at the counter mix that Avalon Hill gave us for wrecked counters. That's it. Every time an armored fighting vehicle or a platoon of tanks is destroyed, you're supposed to put out one of these wrecked counters. If you have two of them in the same hex, you put a two out there. This is the entire counter mix. Yeah. Eight single wrecks, two double wrecks. This scenario has over 40 tank units in it. Most of them are going to be destroyed. I don't think I have enough wreck counters to completely... And this is one of the smaller scenarios. I mean, there are scenarios out there have probably got close to, you know, 70 or 80 armored units out there. So what I did is I just broke out my Panzer Leader game and <laughs> grabbed a bunch of wreck counters from my Panzer Leader game. And, put, and I'm going to be using those. And even then, I'm still probably going to run out. Probably going to have to break out my Panzer Blitz copy and get the wreck counters out of there. All right, so enough complaining. Um, <laughs> I do want to touch a little bit. Uh, there are a lot of people who have played either Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader, usually both. But I, there's not a lot of people that have played Arab-Israeli Wars. Um, and for those of you that have pan played Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz... Yeah, you can step right into Arab-Israeli Wars with no problem. They say Arab-Israeli Wars is an 8 on the Avalon Hill scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being like, you know, Carrier and uh, Rise and Decline to the Third Right. I wouldn't put Arab-Israeli Wars. I'd put Arab-Israeli Wars about a 6. You know, Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader, 4 or 5. This is maybe a 6. But some of the things that you may notice as a difference... Uh, from those of you that played Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, but not played Arab-Israeli Wars, um, is that, yeah, in Panzer Blitz you had these vehicles, the T-3485. Stats are a lot different. Um, movement values, they reduced the movement values a lot uh, between Panzer Leader and uh, Arab-Israeli Wars. Um, and there's reasons why they did that in the... Uh, in the in the designer's notes i'm not going to get totally into that but that is one of the things that you are going to notice that is a big difference uh between the three game systems uh, another thing you're going to notice is that you've now got disrupted markers and panzer leader panzer blitz when any whenever a unit was disrupted you just flipped it over uh, mechanics work a little bit differently now just how the turn sequence is 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 done is that anytime you fire a unit you turn it over just to remind yourself that you fired that unit. 
And this this goes for op fire and just normal fire and all that other good stuff. Or is it when you move? I think it's when you move. One <laughs> when you do no, it's when you shoot. When you shoot, you flip them over. Um, so. And used to be, if you, you flipped them over when they were disrupted, they don't do that now. They kind of clean up the rules a little bit. You flip it over when you shoot, just to remember that. So instead of flipping over to be dispersed now, they gave you dispersed markers. But again, I don't think they gave me enough dispersed markers. Because, you know, there's, what, 15, 20 dispersed markers. <sighs> Another thing that they added in is they added in morale. You don't automatically unco un uh, automatically recover from being dispersed now. Depending on what your morale rating is, you've got a table. Let's see if I can find the table real quick. Uh, yeah, morale chart right here. So depending on what your unit's morale is and what type you are and where you're at, at the beginning or during the rally phase, uh, you roll a D6. And if you actually successfully roll, so for example, if you have morale level A, your infantry unit's not in forts or improved positions. You you uh, undisperse on a 1 through 4. All of the units, including infantry and forts and improved positions, do on a 1 to 5. So that's a little bit new thing uh, that they added in. So you got to kind of look at the scenario because the scenario will tell you what the, uh, what the morale Morale level is. Uh, as far as the combat results table, it, combat results table is the exact same as it was in Panzer Leader and Panzer Blitz. That hasn't changed any. Um, the only other thing, the weapons effectiveness chart uh, is kind of a little bit different. Uh, so if you look at uh, direct fire. Uh, an opportunity fire from an A-class armor-piercing class weapon at an armored target. Okay, one to two hexes is doubled. And from three to six hexes, it's either normal or doubled, and seven plus, it's halved. Well, uh, if you see here, it's either normal or doubled. It's got the subscript of five, and I think a lot of people overlook this. In situations after 1960, Israeli units are doubled. In situations after 1967, uh, Jordanian units are doubled. So since this scenario is in 1967, that means all Israeli units are armored units, armored piercing units, are doubled out to six hexes. Egyptian forces are not. They're only doubled out to one to two hexes. So, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our Centurion and a T-34. So, Centurion's got an attack value of 25. Five hexes or less, that attack value is 50. Versus defense of seven, that Centurion... Firing at T-34, five hexes left, is going to looking at the four to one column. The T-34, however, oops, only gets its firepower doubled to 14 at zero to two hexes, which still isn't enough to get a one to one shot on the Centurion, because, you know, it's 14 to 15, you got a round in defender's favor. That's a one to two. You have to actually get two T-34s at zero to two hexes to get even a one-to-one -one odd shift. So yeah, the T-34 is not going to be doing a lot of damage very quickly to the Centurions. Well, let's take a look at another unit. Let's take a look at SU-100. So, Centurion... Say it's out to, out to five hexes. Is a 50 versus his 15? Well, it's not quite the four to one, but it is a three to one. Or somewhere around there. I haven't run the numbers. Uh, let's see, 50 to 15. Yeah, three to one. Whereas the SU, 16, ah, the finally, finally, just a straight up shot out to six hex, out to five hexes, the SU has a one to one chance against the Centurion. Attack value of 16, defense value of 15, that's 1 to 1. If it's within 2 hexes, it's 32 to 15, which makes it 2 to 1, which makes the SUs much better at killing Centurions and T-34s. However, the Egyptians have got to get those silly vehicles within 2 hexes, whereas the Israelis can just bounce them back and forth at, you know, 3 to 5 hexes and just murder the Egyptians. So the Egyptians have got to play very, very careful, got to play smart, and uh, got to have a little luck if they're going to have any chance against Israeli armor. Which really, if you take a look at it, you know, is kind of kind of how it happened. I mean, the in the actual Battle of Abu Aguila, 
uh, you know, virtually the Egyptians lost virtually all their tanks and the Israelis lost like six, <laughs> you know, that was it, <laughs> that was, you know, that was all they lost. So, um, Oh, what are some other different? Oh, the other different, the other difference that other people may be looking at from Panzer Leader and Panzer Lich, you know, is this is 125 millimeter artillery, and you're saying, wow, that thing's only got like a 13 firepower, when Panzer Leader Panzer Blitz have like a 60 firepower. Well, the difference is, is Panzer Leader Panzer Blitz, whenever artillery would hit a hex, like say if you had an artillery strike hit that hex right there, you would take the total, you would take the value of the artillery, say it would be 60. Divide it by ever, by however many units there are in the stack. Say there's three guys in there. And then, all right, 60 divided by three. Each one of them gets hit with 20. And then figure out whatever their defense is. Uh, they change that. In, uh, in Arab-Israeli wars, the attack value is applied to every unit in the stack. So you've got a 13 attack value with this 125 millimeter. It attacks one unit in the hex. That unit gets attacked with 13 firepower. Compare it to the defense, figure out what the odds are. If there are two units, both of those units get hit with an attack value of 13. Three units, each unit gets hit with an attack value of 13. Four units, each unit gets hit with an attack value of 13. Uh, it actually makes artillery a little bit uh, easier to figure out now because you've got one value that's striking every unit in the hex rather than taking one large value and dividing it up half a dozen different ways because it also made it, it also got to be a pain in the ass. It's like, all right, well, there's four units in the hex. Two of them are armored. Armored units are halved against artillery. It was just, it, just a pain in the ass. So we don't have that much of a pain in the ass this time around. So, is that all the bitching and moaning and complaining I want to do about that? Yes, I actually think that's all I have. So, uh, like I said, hopefully within a day or two, I'll actually sit down and uh, start playing this. It's 10, 10 turns long, um, so we'll see how it goes. And I honestly think the Egyptians, seeing how I, I, since I've ran the numbers and I've looked at it, I think I can keep the Egyptians alive at least most of their armor i'm gonna to have to be really really smart about how i how i approach uh, attacking the israeli armor because it's gonna hurt that's all i got questions comments concerns complaints criticisms in the comment section i'll talk to everybody later see ya